Ciao friends! In this unplugged video I want to talk about the is available in MDX property that we can use to optimize the models in Analysis Services and Power BI. This property disables a few features for MDX, but it also can have side effects for DAX queries in terms of performance. However, the advantage of using this feature is that we can reduce the memory used by a model and also the processing time. So pros, cons, uh, it depends, uh, and I want to provide you the information to make a good decision for your model. So first of all, let's start looking at the description of this uh, property. I think that this uh, blog post of, uh, written by Chris Webb in 2018 is very good to describe this property. So this is the title of the blog post and this is the URL that you can use. I think that this is visible, so you can copy the URL. I probably will copy the URL also in the, in the notes uh, of the video. Now, this property basically disables a feature of, uh, the, of the engine. And let's see how, if I can describe this uh, a little bit. So if, if I scroll down in this uh, article, we see that there is a property that we can basically disable for every column. And this property is also described uh, in the documentation of the TOM, the Tabular Object Model property. Uh, we don't have access to this property in Power BI, but we can use this property for, for, from Tabular Editor. So if I open a database, so let's start from the database I have. So the database is not important, the report is not important. I just have here a model that has a um, few tables, a sales table, a customer table, and a few other tables. And this model is relatively large, so we have something around 10 million rows in the sales table, but the easiest way to see that is to go in DAX Studio. I already have a connection between DAX Studio and the model that we have seen, and we can see that in the VertiPack Analyzer uh, information, we have the sides of the sales table and the customer table in terms of number of rows and in terms of sides in memory. Now, uh, you see that we have other information here. We have, let's uh, just move this a little bit. So let's see if I can drag this, okay. So I want to focus on these columns. So we have a column called data, a column called dictionary, and a col uh, column called hierarchy sites. So this is the column hierarchy sites that we can remove when we use the feature is available in, in MDX. So if we disable the availability of a column in uh, MDX queries, we will basically remove the cost of this uh, column, of this structure. And this decision can be made uh, column by column. So if I open, for example, the customer table, and let's uh, see if I can see this in more detail, you see that a column like customer key, a column like name has a uh, uh, large dictionary sites, but also a relatively large uh, hierarchy sites. And this cost is present also in uh, numeric column, in, uh, in, in, in any column of your model. So before everything else, so let's try to understand what is the reason why this column exists. And I want to switch to the whiteboard to describe just the, quickly what is the concept of, of uh, what is the, the the reason why this uh, structure exists. So what happens when we have a table? A table has uh, several columns. So let's say that we have these columns, column one, column two, column three, and each column has a structure that is, uh, uh, let's say, a dictionary. So the dictionary is the list of the unique values of the column. Then we have the data of the column, which is a compressed version of the column that only has a reference to the dictionary. So the data that we actually have in this structure is basically uh, an index to the dictionary to retrieve the value that we have in a dictionary. Actually, there is also another way to compress data, but we can ignore that at the moment. So why we need a, an additional structure that we call the hierarchy structure, the attribute hierarchy. So the attribute hierarchy works this way. So let's try to, uh, my writing is never so good, but let's try to uh, imagine what is the, the content of a column in a table. Let's say that we have uh, different names, right? So we have like, for example, uh, apple, then we have orange, 
then we have uh, um, pineapple. And as you see, at the moment, I'm writing the names in alphabetical order. But actually, the list of the names in the dictionary does not have to be um, sorted in any way. Actually, what happens is that when the engine compresses data, when there is a new value in the column, the new value is appended to the list of the strings in the dictionary. So the strings in the dictionary can be uh, can have any sort of order. It depends on how the the names are found in uh, in the data. So at this point, I could have, uh, uh, for example, uh, something at, at, a, at the very beginning. We could have, uh, for example, uh, uh, watermelon, which could be. Imagine that this is the first value that has been found, so it could be the first in the list. Now, if you look at the at the list of the names, the engine cannot make any assumption about the sort order. And so when you look for the highest value or you, you, you do any sort operation, it has to read the structure and sort the data. So because in MDX is important for the semantic of the language to establish the sort order of the names in a column, in an attribute, is called this way in MDX, uh, we need a proper sorted list of names. So the attribute hierarchy is basically a copy of the dictionary with the names sorted in alphabetical order, or if you have numbers, the numbers sorted in the natural order. Which means that we basically have here apple, so we have the same list. Then we have orange, then we have uh, uh, pineapple, and then we have watermelon watermelon now if it happens that there is a refresh of data there is some row added in an incremental refresh what happens the attribute hierarchy has to be refreshed and in order to be refreshed it's often uh, rebuilt and this could be something expensive at processing time but the advantage is that you can use mdx however this structure has been also used in the over the years also by the DAX engine in order to optimize a few features. So I want to understand which, what is the difference in DAX if I disable this property? Because I can assume, okay, I don't need this column in NDX, I don't need this column in Excel, but do, am I ready to pay the price for the performance penalty that I could have in DAX by removing this column? It depends, right? It depends on the on the feature. So let's let's try to investigate. And First of all, let's go back to the demo machine and let me describe what I prepared. I have two copies of the same model that I created in Power BI just because it is easier to manage. Then we'll talk about the support of this feature in Power BI, but wait a minute. So let's say that now we, we, we want to understand how it works, then we will evaluate when it is safe to use it. So I have two copies of the same model. One is called Contoso 10M. And the other one, I already have the uh, DAX Studio window open, is called Contoso 10 No MDX. At the moment, the two databases are identical and I didn't make any change, but I will modify only this database, Contoso 10 No, uh, Contoso 10 M, no MDX, and I will keep the original values here so that I can compare the performance or the differences that I obtain when I modify the model. So I keep an original copy ready to make any comparison. So let's see what can we do. So we have um, columns that, that could be candidate to be removed from, uh, from uh, MDX. Even though we want to use Excel to connect Excel to the model and explore the model using a pivot table, we might say, okay, but I can remove the hierarchy, the attribute hierarchy, for example, for columns that I will never expose to, uh, to Excel. Every hidden column, the customer key column is hardly exposed to the user. So I could save this amount of RAM, 11 megabits. Should I expose the order number? Hmm, it depends, right? Uh, I could expose the order number 
to Excel users or I could not. I could decide, no, if, if the user put the order number, it, it's going to be too expensive. So this, this is a, a decision that could be, you know, it, it could, it depends. Certainly, I will not spend too much time worrying about columns that are small, like these columns. So if, if you look at these columns, uh, the cost for storing the dates, uh, because we have a small number of unique values, this cost is not that high. So I would be more concerned about columns that have a high granularity, a high number of unique values, because those columns are more expensive. And when I go in uh, the customer table, so if I uh, just go this way, okay, if I look at the customer table, I can see that actually I have a large dictionary for certain columns, but also relatively large hierarchy size. So you see that we have customer key, but name, address, zip code. Well, name, address are columns I might want to expose or not. It depends. So let's see what happens if I uh, comment some of these, uh, uh, no comment, if I disable this property for some of these columns. And let's start with something that I want to maybe hide to the user. So let's start from the, uh, let's see, the order number or the customer key. The customer key is certainly hidden. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to DAX, uh, to, sorry, to tabular editor. So I have to go in Contoso, no MDX. From here, I open tabular editor. You can use tabular editor two or tabular editor three is the same. I'm using tabular editor two. I go in the table, says, uh, and we said customer key. So this is the column I want to disable. And I go in uh, the in the properties here. And yes, I don't see the the, um, the value. Why? Because in uh, uh, the preferences, I should enable this flag, allow unsupported Power BI features. Because what I'm going to do is not supported right i'm i'm gonna touch up property that is not supported to be changed for power bi desktop however you can change this property for a model that you published in a power bi service or in analysis services a model in analysis services written in visual studio so we want to understand how it works i know that actually this will work for a power bi desktop it's just not supported so use this at your own risk and the property that I want to change is this one. Available in MDX now is true because by default, all the columns are set to true in, uh, uh, for, this, uh, for this property. So I set this column to false and I save the changes to the model. Now, as soon as I do that, if I go back to DAX Studio in the uh, optimized database, you see that if I go in uh, uh, sales, and I go in customer key. Now the hierarchy size is still here, but just because I didn't refresh the metrics. So if I click on view metrics again, I open sales and you see that now the value for the hierarchy size is zero. Okay, so we can see that even though I don't refresh the model, the hierarchy is removed, the attribute hierarchy is removed from the model immediately, which means that I can already measure the impact for this. And how can I do that? Well, we are removing the hierarchy sides of the, sorry, the attribute hierarchy from the customer key in the sales table. Um, does this affect in some way? So imagine that this could be used in the join. I know that the join should not use this, but a way to evaluate that is to write um, um, a query. So let's evaluate something like a summarize columns where we want to group by an attribute of the customer table. Let's use a customer. Let's see here what I have. I want to use probably customer continent, something that has a small number of unique values. And for each continent, I want to see the sales amount. Sales amount, and I want to use the measure sales amount. So I will copy and paste this, uh, prop, this query in the other um, DAX Studio, but I want to analyze the performance. So let's use the short line, enable server timings. And here in server timings, I want to, let's see if I can see the, why I have this one open here. Okay, it's the original database, uh, optimized database. Okay, in server timings, I run this with clearing the cache. 
and I want to check the performance. I, I will run this, the very same query in the other uh, connection with the original database so that I can compare if I have a different execution. So this is the execution in the optimized database where I remove the structure for MDX. I copy and paste this code in the original database here. And I run this query using the server timings and clear cache and run, just like the other. I want to compare if I have differences in the query plan, in the storage engine queries and so on. So I go here, I run this again, and let's see, well, so if, if I compare the um, execution, we see that we had some difference. We had a small difference actually uh, between the storage engine CPU, but I'm worried that if we execute this again several times, uh, we could end up looking at the same result. Indeed, you see that we had 234 milliseconds uh, for the optimized version, original database 250 milliseconds. Now, it's, it's strange because uh, the version that I call optimized, let, let's call this not optimized, no MDX database. It's better because it's not necessarily optimized. So this is running faster than this one. But again, I, I think that the difference in the 10% order is not something I would be concerned about. So I don't know. I don't know. It seems that actually it's running faster, even though in theory, I would not have expected that. So let's see the, if the query plan has some difference. We run this query again with the query plan because I know that there could be some difference in the query plan, but in this case, I don't expect this to happen. So it could be just a coincidence. And let's do this again here and go in the query plan and we can compare the query plans. So we have the same operations at the query plan level. I don't see any difference to be honest. So probably, okay, this, there is some difference. Actually, the version without the MDX information seems faster. But I would say that the difference is relatively small. 10% is not that big. So let's, let's move forward. Okay. There is something. Um, th this could be interesting to, to investigate more. I didn't expect that, to be honest. But let's move forward because I, I want to do other tests. So this test is related to a column that is hidden. So if I uh, look at other columns of the model, so let's go back to the diagram to the, to the vertipack analyzer matrix in the no MDX database. And let's move, let, let's apply this to some other columns that I want to involve in some calculation where I expect some difference in uh, uh, MDX. So for example, I could, a classical thing is to remove the hierarchy size in columns like unit cost, unit price, because we use these columns uh, in the calculation. In our sales amount is multiply the quantity by the unit cost, the unit price, and usually this is a good idea when you have a sum of a column that, have very, that has a very large hierarchy size. In those cases, I know that we should not see any difference. The problem for the model I'm using, I don't have a big column to see the difference, but I know that we can do some tests, some analysis on columns that I would like to expose in, uh, in, um, in MDX and I, or I would like to, to compute. In, uh, in DAX uh, to see whether there, there, there is some difference. So let's do the same operation over these columns, name and address. Okay, so I want to do the same operation over the column name and address. And so let's do the same operation. So let's go back to uh, tabular editor. We go to the customer table and we disable the is available in MDX property in name and address. Address is actually hidden, whereas name is visible. So probably the idea of hiding this information in the rest is a good idea for the name, I don't know. So first of all, now that I applied this property to columns that are visible because name is visible, let's see what happens when I try to use this model from Excel. So if I select this uh, Contoso no MDX where I apply the changes and I click on analyze in Excel so that I open an Excel instance connected to this model. So let's see if I can use this the right with the right sides. Okay. If I look at the content of the, so let me move the pivot table fields on this side so I can uh, see this better and let's uh, uh, reduce the size of the, uh, 
I cannot reduce the size of the ribbon. Okay, that's fine. So let's see if I can enlarge this. No, oh, I have a very, very small uh, real estate for that. I don't know how, uh, maybe this one, no. I'm, I'm not able to get rid of the ribbon for some reason. So let's see if I have in the customer table. So I know this is very, very small, but in the list of the columns here, I should not see the name. And as you see, we have the country, the gender, we don't have the name. If I go back to the Power BI version and I click on customer, you see that the name is available here. So I can use the name to filter or to apply any calculation or index. I cannot do this in uh, MDX. And this is expected, right? Because if we disable, uh, is available in MDX, uh, we don't expect to see this uh, um, this column visible in Excel. Now, what are the consequences in DAX though? So let's go back to uh, DAX Studio and let's go in DAX Studio with uh, the um, database that doesn't have the attribute. And this time I write um, query that get the first 10 customer sorted based on the customer name, customer name, right? So this could be interesting because I know that this because of the the sort order can be used by DAX can be the, the attribute hierarchy that is sorted can be used by DAX to optimize an operation that involves the sorting. If I request the top ten customer by name, not having the attribute hierarchy could affect the performance of this uh, calculation. Let's try. So if I run this query, the query provides me the result. Of the top 10 customer so so far so good it's a top 10 customer in a descending way by default for this reason you see the names that uh, begins with the z and if i go to the server timings i repeat this query a couple of times we see that the cost for this query on this mo on this uh, machine is two seconds and a half split by formula engine and storage engine this way so we see the the execution is uh, taking some time, so let me enlarge this so we can see without using the zoom. So this is the situation for the op for the database where I removed this attribute hierarchy. Let's repeat the same operation with the original database. So the original database is here. I paste this code. I want to see the server timings and I run this query again. Let's execute this. Let's execute the same query a couple of times. And now we see some difference, which is big, to be honest, because now if I increase the font, the font size, and I look at the numbers side by side, you see that the original database was executing the same uh, operation in half of the time. And the difference is mainly in the formula engine. The formula engine is running in 249 milliseconds, whereas in this case, it is running in uh, um, 1,600 milliseconds. So is way slower, whereas the storage engine has the same execution. And let's see if, whether there is some difference at the storage engine level. So I have here an execution that retrieves all the columns from the, all the columns and all the rows from the customer table. You can see it from the storage engine query here. And this is returning one million and a half and 500,000 rows. This is the original database, the fast, the fast one. And actually, this is the same in uh, in this case. So what I expect is some difference at the query plan level. So let's uh, enlarge this uh, query plan and let's go to the equivalent information in uh, the original database. So let's enlarge this a little bit and let's compare side by side. So on the right, we have the original database and on the left, we have uh, the um, the database that doesn't have the information about the attribute hierarchy. And I see the difference. I see one difference. The difference is here. Line six, uh, you see that in one case we have uh, an operator called column value for the version that doesn't have the attribute hierarchy. Whereas in the case of the original database, we have this call position, column position, which means that the query plan leverages on the existing attribute hierarchy to get the position of the of the name 
in the alphabetical sort order, whereas in the other case, this position has to be computed on the fly. And this is the reason why the formula engine is spending more time because it has to sort these uh, 1 million customers in order to find the right sort order. In the other case, this is not required. So this is a case where there is a big impact in removing the, um, uh, the attribute hierarchy. Uh, but we also had a big saving, so it depends, right? So if this is an if this operation sorting customer by name and getting the top ten is a very important one, a very common one, you might want to optimize it. If you know that you never do that, uh, imagine the address. We don't expect people to sort by address name, so probably it was good a good idea to remove the attribute hierarchy for the address column. Not so good for the name. So, uh, good point. So let's see if we can do some other analysis. Um, what about calculation of uh, uh, distinct count? So if I go back to the optimized database, not optimized, uh, the database without the um, attribute hierarchy, what happens if I compute a calculation like distinct count? Uh, oops distinct count of the uh, distinct count okay okay today i'm not good okay distinct count of the customer name so remember this is the version of the database that doesn't have the attribute hierarchy so if i execute this code I get a single number as a result, which is 1,010,059. Uh, this is the number I obtain as a result. And if I look at the query, uh, if I look at the server timings, I spent uh, 191 milliseconds, one storage engine query. Remember, I included in the cache before every execution. So let's do the same operation with uh, the other database. So this one. And I paste this code, I look at the server timings, and I run. Three milliseconds. Let's check. The result is the same. The number I obtain is the same, but I see no storage engine queries, and the formula engine only spent three milliseconds to retrieve the data, the information. Why? Because basically this information is already available in the structure of the attribute hierarchy. The attribute hierarchy has a sorted list of names, but it also knows how many names are there and so this is the reason why it was so fast however as soon as i include a filter so let's use a calculate to compute how many unique customers we have in for example customer country equal to united states and so if if i apply a filter to the query so this is my new definition of the query. I run this query now in the original database, which was the fast one. And you see that now we have a storage engine query that is actually computing the calculation. And at this point, if I go back to the version that doesn't have uh, the attribute hierarchy, and I execute this code also on this database, I see that the execution time is similar I still have a storage engine query. So basically what we found is that when you apply a, an aggregation operation like distinct count over a column that doesn't have any filter over the table, then the evaluation can be optimized by using the attribute hierarchy. Actually, this happens for the distinct count for the min and the max, not for the sum. The sum has to compute the, the actual content of the table because it's important to know whether the same value is present multiple times but when you just want to get the first or the last value in a column we can see that we have a similar behavior so for example if i write the code like give me the minimum of the customer name remember we removed the in this database we removed the attribute hierarchy for the customer name this request is getting the entire list of names and is moving this list of names to the formula engine and the formula engine is actually spending time finding the first one, the first one in alphabetical sort order. If I repeat the same operation 
in uh, the other database, the one that has the attribute hierarchy, the original one, you see that also in this case, I have no storage engine queries and the formula engine doesn't have to compute anything because it already has the first value. And the same happens if I get the last value, max, I have the same, uh, the same fast result. However, again, if I apply a calculate and I filter the customer country equal to United States, I expect to not see any additional optimization. And now I expect this calculation works as any, any other time. Actually, this is a, an interesting callback data ID. That is something I want to investigate. So there is a min max column position callback. So there could be actually some benefit from using this, uh, um, this values, yeah, maybe that there is some optimization. That is interesting. So this means that in this case, also having the filter, I could have some advantage. Let's see. We run this code here. Wow, wow. You see that there is a difference also in this case. So in this case, we have a complete copy of the customer name column filtered by United States. And this copy is evaluated by the formula engine. Whereas in this other case, this is the case where we don't have the attribute hierarchy. Uh, no, not this one, sorry, this one, okay. This is the case where we don't have the attribute hierarchy. We have a different storage engine query that uses a specific call by data ID, call min max column position callback. This is probably using internally the structure that we have seen, the attribute hierarchy that we removed in the other database. And the benefit is that we have a much faster execution in the formula engine uh, let me check the storage engine. So if I look at the storage engine, no, actually also the storage engine, yeah, because the storage engine is faster because it doesn't have to materialize the result. Probably there is a additional cost in terms of scan in the table, but there is a saving in the materialization, which is probably more important. So it would be interesting to see the same in a uh, in much larger database. We, we, we're doing an optimization that makes sense when you have a large models with a lot of unique values in the column because otherwise uh, probably doesn't it doesn't matter but yeah there, there is an impact there is a side effect in using um in using in, in removing the attribute hierarchy if we use min and max so at this point it worth to to test i mean i assume that there is no difference if we remove the value so let me see if i go back here what happens if I remove the the, um, the attribute hierarchy from columns that ha that are used to compute the sales amount? For example, the sales amount is using quantity and net price, so I want to remove from quantity and net price the uh, attribute hierarchy, and I expect this to have no effect in the calculation. So I disabled the available in MDX for the quantity and for the unit price. I save the changes. And now I want to go in the original database. I just want to compute sales amount, single value. I scan the entire table, 10 million rows. And this is executed in a very, very quick way, right? So we have 18 milliseconds, total storage engine CPU 78. I run this again, same result. Let's copy this code into the database where we, apply, where we removed the attribute hierarchy in the two columns and we have similar results. So let me start this again, but when the, when the difference is below 20 milliseconds, usually we don't have to spend too much time. And look, they are basically identical. So at this level, I would, I would consider that the assumption that removing the attribute hierarchy for a column that is only used in an aggregation like sum doesn't have any side effect. But we have seen that for min, max and distinct count, there are side effects when we don't apply filters, but also when we apply filters because of the special callbacks that we have seen. So um, do we have some other case where we can have some optimization? Uh, probably also treat as has side effects, but I don't want to go deeper because uh, it's, uh, it's already a long video and my 
previous investigation didn't find a particular interesting examples. I, I think that these were the more important examples. So basically, if we have to apply um, condition that is uh, influenced by the sort order, then the attribute hierarchy is meaningful. If we have conditions like minimum and maximum that involve the sort order again, the attribute hierarchy can be useful also in DAX. And in the other cases, just with the for the sum or for just applying a filter over a column like equal to uh, or less than, usually doesn't we don't see any particular difference in the performance. This is at least based on my previous investigation. Of course, this could change. So my suggestion is always to do your own investigation in your model. You have seen how I uh, created the, the, the test. I was using two copies of the same database with the same queries to compare the execution in terms of query plan, storage engine, formula engine, and evaluate whether removing the uh, attribute hierarchy could be good for your model. Remember, what I did is not supported. Now, if I publish the model on Power BI service and I remove the attribute hierarchy from the model I published with, by using the XMLA endpoint, using Tabular Editor, it is supported. I did the test locally just to, to run this test faster and to be accurate at the level of the milliseconds we used, but doing this in Power BI desktop is not supported, so I'm not suggesting you to use this in uh, your models in production because uh, that could provide side effect that we cannot predict. So please use this only for models that you publish on Power BI service or analysis services so they are supported and you can uh, uh, you can use it in a reliable way enjoy dax <laughs>